Once again, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us this evening for a very special presentation in partnership with the Maine Coast Workshop. The Maine Coast Workshop is a woodworking, uh, a traditional woodworking and carving school in Camden, Maine. And I encourage you to visit their website so that you can find out about upcoming classes that are being taught by world-class instructors. And we have one of those world-class instructors here tonight. We are going to be having Alexander Grabovetsky speaking with us and doing a presentation. He is originally from Russia and he now resides in Florida. He is renowned for his classical wood carving. Uh, and he is the founder of the School of Woodcarving.com, an online wood carving school. Um, he founded this about five years ago, but tonight he's going to be talking about his lifetime of experience with wood carving. So without further ado, I'd like to turn the program over to Alexander. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much. I hope you can see me. Just to say that out loud that you can see me. Julia. Yes, I can see you. Wonderful people. Good to have you. Well, on that Zoom, whatever the live thing, our presentation, you can put. The class, I really, I really do appreciate you people. Okay. We have people from all over the United States, from California, from even Qatar international okay and of course we have across the street it's the <laughs> people living right here in the state of maine the whitest of the whitest ski like a milky white all right but let me introduce myself yes my name is alexander and don't even try to pronounce my name okay it's grabovetsky it's impossible i thought i'm gonna build a business actually on pronunciation um, of my name i told people in my class uh, uh we had a class in tampa florida and one of the guys uh you know i can't i, I shouldn't say he was anointed i mean he is annoying but not anointed but but anyway uh people got annoyed uh, just because he mispronounced my name and i said i'm gonna charge you a dollar each time you're gonna mispronounce I could have made like about half a thousand in one day. He still owes me, he still didn't pay me. But anyway, I'm a wood carver, okay? And I can say that a wood carving is what I love. Although I had a lot of businesses before, uh, but wood carving is something that I do pretty much all life uh, uh, since childhood, since uh, six years old, okay? <laughs> I mean, if you can say it <laughs> that way, six years old. Uh, so my first uh, carving project wasn't even a uh, wood related okay so i stole a chisel from my grandfather and you can imagine the chisel even in the united states it's not cheap tool i mean you go and shop and you'll find out a good chisel costs about 40 dollars and that's not cheap at all okay and that's one of the cheapest ones because you can spend about $150 sometimes just on one chisel. But anyway, that was the beginning. So I am pretty much stole a chisel from my grandfather and I found the brick. It wasn't wood, it was just a silicone white brick. And I carved uh, some kind of face, okay? And guess uh, how happy my grandfather was. <laughs> and he said, you know, he wasn't happy at all of course you know he said that's not how you use that chisel I, of course i killed that thing completely you know so he i mean of course he can regrind it and uh, reshape it but you know it was a bad thing but i always loved wood carving and if you would ask me about uh, how i got in it my great 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 grandfather uh, he was a furniture maker but he was uh, not only furniture maker, he was working actually in the royal palaces uh, in St. Petersburg in Russia. Uh, I mean, when you go to St. Petersburg, just to go in those palaces and check out uh, furniture, uh, most likely some of that was built by great, great, great grandfather. Okay, I still can't <laughs> figure out <laughs> how many greats, but anyway, one of them, okay. And I guess I got uh, that in blood. Uh, I always loved wood. Uh, it's a, something special about wood. And yes, I mentioned that uh, he built furniture in Russia. That's the place uh, I was born, which is not really accurate. Okay, I was born in USSR. It was much bigger just uh, than Russia, but Russian part of USSR. Uh, but even now, 
even now, I mean, uh, when we're talking about uh, Russia, do you even understand how huge, how big it is? Okay, just to check how many time zones we have. It's 11 time zones, 11 time zones. Can you imagine? It's just the Russia after Soviet Union broke apart. It's huge. Look at the map, just go Google. I mean, on the Google maps and just uh, Google Russia, okay? And uh, move and check the size of United States versus size of the Russia. Just for you to understand, it's a one third of all land, okay? All land on the planet Earth, it's one third of all land. It's a huge country. Well, and I know you're probably going to ask me the second question. Uh, you know, I always get that second question when I'm saying I'm from Russia. They say, really? Where from exactly? Like they know, you know, <laughs> you know, like they are really, really know all the towns besides the Moscow. And some people actually think uh, Russia is a part of Moscow. Not Moscow part of Russia. I mean, yeah, I mean, I've got that question, really. I mean, they said, is uh, Russia part of Moscow? No, it's not. It's just a part of St. Saint Petersburg. <laughs> and the Siberia is just a small section, by the way. OK, but anyway, uh, I'm a wood carver and I want to show you. I want to show you a, a picture of uh, younger me and how I look now. All right. So that is a 16 years old me, all curly hair and uh, you know playing guitar versus uh, how I look right now. Am I looking same or no? Pretty close. Pretty close, yes. But anyway, so uh, when I was a uh, little older, I was already carving. Like I said, I'm carving uh, pretty much all the time, okay? So that is the furniture, of course, uh, uh, one furniture piece. But uh, carving is my passion. I won a couple uh, good prizes. I mean, prizes uh, for the wood carving. Uh, I won first place. It's actually international uh, international championship a few years ago, 2011. I guess it's 10 years ago already. Wow, it's uh, time is flying. And uh, I was called uh, international wood carver. And uh, to be honest, to be honest, I don't know if anybody else has the title after that. I didn't see any more who won that title. So I guess I hold that title for 10 years. <laughs> so <laughs> am I proud about it? I guess maybe a little bit, but uh, let me show you that piece a little closer. Okay, so that is the piece. All right, so it's a flowers. Flowers, 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 and I love. And that is uh, me with the flowers you can see. Uh, it's about 36 inches long and about 24 inches wide, okay? 24, maybe less, maybe 22, 21. I don't remember, but 36, okay, point to point. 36 inches. Uh, I won another prize. Uh, won another prize for another project, uh, like in 2015 for this project. Uh, and uh, also flowers. It's also about 36 inches but it's again, it's just the flowers, flowers, and flowers. If you would ask me why flowers, uh, I, I really like a challenges, I guess. And the most challenging wood carving project, it's a flower, okay? If you know what you do. Uh, the flower, we're talking about uh, uh, carving, and we talked uh, on Monday all the laws of design, like Fibonacci sequence, golden ratio. And the flower is a perfect representation of the Fibonacci uh, sequence and so on, how many petals in the flower and so on. It's really complicated to carve, okay? Uh, I, I saw so many people actually try to carve, but I, you know, it's really hard. Uh, for me, it's harder than even uh, any animal or even human face. Uh, let me find that award. Uh, it's, it was an editor's uh, choice. I won the first place in 2015. Uh, it was named as the best object made out of wood. So one of the best pretty much. But if you would like to see that little closer, that project right there, that's the, the level of it, okay? I mean, uh, it took me a long time. Don't get me wrong. It's just not like a one week <laughs> or weekend project. It took me long to do that. But uh, all those petals, they are paper thin. 
and you can see some of the holes. You can see the some of the holes, and I made that on purpose, of course. You know, like uh, in real life, warm holes. You know, but not really. <laughs> okay, it was just my mistake because I just carved so much and just uh, took out <laughs> too much of material and um, got some holes in it. Uh, so let me show you, uh, let's say, another project. Let me show you, for example, um, uh, I was, uh, of course, much younger, uh, uh, sunflowers, okay? That is another thing what girls love or ladies love. They love sunflowers. And here's a closer look to it. Uh, so, and maybe I can find the picture a little better picture. Let me try to find it right there, okay? Okay, so that is a sunflower project. Uh, 24 inches also, about 18 inches wide, 24 high, 18 inches wide, and it is in one of the houses of my customers. And yes, I do carve for money. Okay, go ahead and judge me. But uh, I'm okay with that people. Uh, matter of fact, the best work of art in the history was carved for money. Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo projects, they were, they were all paid, okay? You wouldn't even see some of the projects if uh, he wouldn't get paid. Or Leonardo da Vinci, or Michelangelo, or Glenn Gibbons, all for money. It's just uh, exchange, it's a business. What you're trying to invest in, your talent, your you know, abilities, your time, and what you want to get out. So uh, pretty much it's my profession. Although it wasn't all the time like that, uh, I was carving all my life, but when I uh, grew up in Russia, uh, when I grew up in Russia, I ended up uh, pretty much in jail, okay? I don't have that uh, newspaper when I got in the newspaper. Uh, and I've got in jail for just uh, being Christian. And then I can say that openly, uh, so that, that yes, I do believe in creator. And I, I mean, again, go ahead and judge me. I, I really don't worry about it. I was in jail for that, okay? So I, I'm okay. I do believe in creator. I do believe in all the laws of creation and so on. And uh, I know how to defend uh, what I believe in. But uh, when I was 18 years old, I got inside of the jail, not for you know, criminal activity for just my beliefs, pretty much. But wood carving helped me uh, to survive. Uh, uh, let me tell you how, okay? While I was in jail, Soviet Union broke apart. And it was really hard outside of this, I mean, outside of the jail. No food in the stores. You just go in a store and you can't find anything. For common people, they lost all the jobs. They didn't have any money. It was really, really, really bad time, okay? So really bad time. And in jail and prison, it was even worse. It was really bad. Uh, first, of course, I've got to jail and then I was transferred to prison. Uh, just uh, to understand what it was like, the jail was uh, not that big room, 300 years old one of the buildings built for jail, like 300 years old in, uh, uh, in Russia. If you live in the United States, if you wanna see how it looked, just to go in Florida in uh, St. Saint Augustine and there's a fortress and uh, you can just go right there, there's a jail. I mean, like a cell, there's a single jail. Uh, I mean, single cell uh, in that fortress, but that actually it looked exactly like what uh, we had in Russia, even in 20th century. All right, so that is uh, the place I was. No windows. Okay, yeah, we had a window, but it was covered uh, with uh, like a uh, metal and uh, there's no sunshine, there's uh, no sunsets, no light from outside. Uh, and the only light source we had is just the ceiling lights. Uh, 30 people in one room, bunk beds, and we would take turns uh, to sleep. Some people slept during the night, some people slept during the, you know, uh, day and we would take a turn. Uh, just imagine everybody smoked, and the only person who didn't smoke it, it was me. And uh, we had uh, like uh, you know the toilet in the corner, and the smell was terrible. I mean, you can only just imagine how bad it was. Okay, 
uh, only once a month, sometimes once a week, they would uh, give us a chance to take a shower. And the shower was just a cold shower, pretty much. I mean, it's just a really cold shower. But it was like a big celebration day for us. It was a big deal. Of course, no shampoo, no soap, no nothing, just the water. Okay. So we didn't have any chemicals. <laughs> so, and that was uh, the time in jail. Uh, then I was transferred to prison. Okay. And uh, some kind of, you know, freedom you would say, because at least we could walk outside of the building. It still was uh, like a, a prison system and we had uh, like a prison inside of the prison. Each building was separated with, with the fences and you could not walk from one place to another place. But just because I was uh, a wood carver and Soviet Union broke apart and people didn't have money, but some of the people still had the same habits. And one of those people, it was one guy from administration. He loved to drink. We call it like, you know, it's uh, how we show that in Russia. So he lived by the drinking, okay? Vodka, if you don't understand that. But if there's no money, okay, how can you buy it every night? And uh, we kind of got the deal. I would carve some kind of jewelry box and he would sell it and get drunk. <laughs> That's it. It's how we started uh, in exchange for one potato a day. Okay, so uh, he would let me to go to kitchen and get one potato. It wasn't like a huge Idaho, you know, potato like you can buy uh, right now. You can fit the whole family with one thing. No, it was just a normal, no GMO, <laughs> small potato. That's the only potato you could get. And even that potato, I didn't eat myself. Uh, we had to actually share it. Uh, imagine a uh, food in jail was so bad. Okay, uh, I mentioned to you people that is just a, like a black, dark, murky water with some kind of stuff flying in it with the hair. And if you eat that, you're going to die from diarrhea. Sorry to say that, but it's the truth. Okay, you can't eat that stuff. And the only way to survive, uh, we would unite uh, four people together. And uh, each person could get once a month some food from outside. But we didn't have uh, refrigerators. So pretty much uh, uh, the only food we could get, uh, which you, know, you can keep without refrigeration and so on. But we would share. Like one person would get one week uh, food, another person another week, another person. We just had shared the, how it goes, OK? Uh, but it lasts like a day or so. I mean, it's not like you're going to get a huge package with the food. It's just a small package. We would divide on it. It was just a, like a one uh, day a week or two days. Sometimes it lasts uh, like a celebration for us, like a feast. But rest of the days, we didn't have anything beside my potato. Okay. Uh, we would split that potato in four. <laughs> We're talking about uh, low calorie and uh, <laughs> high, you know, uh, you know, that the proteins and uh, what's the carbs, high carbs uh, diet, no, no protein, no nothing else. <laughs> okay, so like a quarter of potato pretty much. I forgot to tell uh, on my uh, live uh, uh, stream when I did uh, YouTube, but now I remember, yes, it was just one potato, but we still share it. And that actually gave me an opportunity to share my belief with other people. And some of them actually became Christian just because nobody would share. You know, everybody's just fighting for their own life, right? But it was bad. And again, it's not only that. It was so bad. Uh, uh, and it gets cold in Russia, really, really cold. Uh, I remember the time it was in 40s below zero. Like, imagine 42 below zero and no heat source inside. There's absolutely no heat source. I would go to bed in clothing and wake up in uh, icicles. You know, it was cold. And some people died. And some people got really sick, but because of wood carving, I survived. We started with the jewelry boxes. Uh, then we decided to do, uh, to do uh, a furniture, like a really hand carved uh, coffee tables and uh, some uh, kitchen cabinets and so on with some carved elements right out of the jail. And administration would sell it to mafia people. Okay, and I would still get one potato a day, exactly the same thing of what I was getting for jewelry boxes.
bucks. It was a good business, I guess. I, at least I survived. But um, the problem after jail, when I got out, just because of the amnesty, the Soviet Union broke apart. Uh, there was a celebration of victory uh, in May of nine in the Second World War. Uh, so they decided uh, to release, you know, the people who have been prosecuted for religion reasons and polit uh, political reasons and so on. And I got out. But there was another problem. Okay. I couldn't find any job. I couldn't find any job because nobody would employ me. I mean, people without a criminal record, although I wasn't criminal, but I had a prison behind me. They couldn't uh, take me. I mean, there's a plenty of people who didn't have a jobs without that record. What could I do? Okay. I had to start again my business pretty much. First, uh, I started with my teacher. Uh, he is uh, a master wood carver and he's also a professional artist. Uh, and he was a professor in university. And uh, I was the only one apprentice. He took me when I was 16 years old. Uh, I forgot to tell you. So uh, professionally, he actually taught me how to carve. Uh, even if I'm saying I'm carving since 16 years old. But in reality, uh, when I met the guy, he said, I don't know anything. And I had to learn uh, from the beginning all about the design, all about the sharpening, all about, you know, uh, how to use the tools and the wood carving process and so on. And uh, it lasted actually not seven years like it's supposed to last, 16 till 18. Then I was arrested. So, but after the jail, we, we started business together, working for new Russians. They would call new Russians. Uh, it's the people with the money. We still don't know how they got the money. I guess they stole it <laughs> from other people, <laughs> but it's pretty much uh, mafia people. Okay, we would just do some work inside of the houses uh, for a few months. And then I had to leave the town and move to another city. And again, I couldn't find any job. I had to start my own business. Okay, and again, just because I, I was able to carve, I, I found the same, you know, new Russians, mafia guys and government people. <laughs> because sometimes you don't know who's who. They live in the same, same subdivision and they friends, they grill, you know, chicken every Friday together. <laughs> One is a guy. So that's, uh, you know, how I started business. Then I escaped Russia in 1996. I escaped Russia and came to United States as a refugee. And again, problem, okay? Uh, not because my criminal, or not criminal, but prison, not that reason, but I didn't speak any English. I couldn't find any job pretty much. Had to start my own. Yes, I was working like a carpenter for a little bit, but then, uh, I started my own business and that wasn't only carving. We actually started really successful woodworking business. And uh, there's a newspaper uh, in 1998, I believe that newspaper, uh, that immigrant establishes woodworking firm. And we became actually one of the best in multi-state as far as the quality wise. And uh, uh, I was uh, what, like uh, 25 years old. I had eight employees working for me that when we started then we decided to do uh, building homes and so on. Some people did just a finished carpentry. Some people did wood flooring. Some people did only cabinetry. And we built uh, houses, not just the small houses, but we did the high-end houses and so on. And uh, again, I was really successful. I was really successful. I mean, it's, uh, it's the only one newspaper, but I got the newspaper uh, multiple times for, you know, just uh, in the woodworking world. Uh, then, uh, you know, my people would uh, do woodworking and I would just carve, okay? I would carve and control the building process and so on. So everybody's did own part. And I love wood carving, by the way. I really love wood carving. So those lines, what you see right now, uh, it's, uh, uh, you can see the size of it. It's about uh, 48 inches, four feet. To be exact, uh, it's a 47 inches uh, and 3 16 okay? So, but anyway, close to four feet. And uh, they are, went on the door, or doors, okay? So, 
hello. <laughs> Okay, I don't want to cover myself, but anyway, I just get an idea. Let me walk around. Okay, let me walk around. Actually, you know what? I'll just show you better picture. I'll show you much better picture. All right, right there. Okay, so it was before I installed uh, those lines, but look close. Okay, look close. Each line is different. Uh, one has a tongue goes up, and uh, another tongue goes down. Okay. So nobody can say that I see and see that thing, right? Uh, you know, I mean, yes. I mean, some people saying, yes, you're using CNC. No, I don't use CNC. And look at the eyes. I even used different expression of the eyes. It's a different look, all right? But look close. Uh, there's even veins, right? So all the veins, all the arteries, all the blood vessels right there. So I don't think you can do that on CNC. Correct? And uh, let me show you, I think I do have a video walk around for you would uh, understand. Well, let me show you how it's installed. Right there is installed, okay? And the house is like museum. Uh, and that person's house, you can find the, the best work of art. The whole house like that, by the way, the whole house, okay? And uh, I mentioned to you, uh, people in the, in the class that look on the sides of those doors two statues only two people actually uh, got really famous they became famous in wood carving world one of them glenn gibbons who carved flowers and fruits and another one is a tillman riemann schneider in germany eight, uh, 15th century so those two statues carved by tillman riemann schneider and i love the idea that my lines are above <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I love it, okay? But when you open the doors and go inside of that bedroom and look at the left, I found one of the pieces I was looking online, the furniture pieces done by Andre Believe, it's how we call him, it's a French furniture maker, a really famous one. And I loved this particular piece. It was just an awesome piece, really awesome piece. And uh, I tried to find, locate, what museum that piece locates it in. Nobody would say. And I walk inside of that bedroom through those doors and right on the left hand side, the piece is there. And I said, John, is that the piece? And he said, yeah. And he said, I'm gonna show you something else. And he walked me to the bathroom, the master bathroom. And there was a piece from Russian museum from Kermitash, the original one and the fake one in museum, you know? That's the guys, actually, the clients I'm working with. That's one of the highest of the highest uh, end, if you wish, uh, clients, okay? But let me show you a small video. You can um, let me <laughs> stay on this side, just like uh, walk around, okay? Walk around uh, and you can see the expression of it before it was uh, completely finished and installed, okay? And those lines, uh, not just the lines, I even, uh, didn't know lion is not just a lion. There's different lions, okay? There's a African lion. There's a Middle Eastern lion. D different expression, different nose. Nose, like even cats. Like, for example, I have a Persian cat. It, you know, really flat face, you know, and you have, you know, a normal cat with a long mancoon cat. It's a Siberian related one, okay? In Siberia. Ukrainian, well, okay, Ukrainian, but Ukraine is not part of Siberia. But anyway, but, and I didn't know lines are also different, okay? That particular one is an African lion. That's what he wanted, okay? I mean, that client, he wanted African lion, all right? And before I installed that line, I had to actually present him uh, with the clay model. But like I said, I still love uh, carving flowers. Let me give you a better picture of it. I think I do have a better, well, right there is a better picture. Okay. I mean, I'm talking about, <laughs> I can see <laughs> and I can. Uh, as far as the uh, lovewoodcarving.com, what you saw previously, uh, like a uh, lion and also those flowers, everything is available on my school site, schoolofwoodcarving.com. And I have people from all over the world. I even don't know how many countries. Honestly, some countries I even didn't know exist. You know, 
uh, of course, I knew, you know, some of the countries like Bangladesh, Vietnam, and uh, but I would never expect uh, people from those countries would uh, join the school. I mean, we're talking about Japan, China, India. Yes, I was expecting like United States and UK because I speak in English uh, in my school site, but people even without uh, uh, English language, they joined my school from all over Spanish speaking countries like a Southern America. I mean, those all South America countries, uh, you know, all European countries, including Norway, Sweden, Germany, of course, UK, you know, they, they were the ones of the first ones, you know, and uh, Spain, and I've got from Israel, I've got some from Arab uh, countries, countries and so on from Dubai. I mean, you name it, I've got uh, people from all, all over. Now I even don't check. Okay, because they're signing all the time. I have people signing all the time uh, daily, pretty much. They're adding and adding and adding, and I'm happy about it, okay? Uh, schoolofwoodcarving.com. Go ahead and check that. Oh, by the way, it's not the right uh, link. Okay, it's not. <laughs> that is actually uh, the main coastworkshop.com. It's the place I'm teaching today. It's uh, William Brown. I call him Bill because he became a friend of mine, okay? So we can do that, and we can shake hands. William Brown, he's an excellent furniture maker. I mean, one of the best, as far as I know, it's what he told me anyway. Okay. <laughs> right. So, but uh, that's the place I teach right now. So, but my site is this one. My apologies, okay? <laughs> so that is my site. Uh, so it's a schoolofwoodcarving.com. I mean, school site, because I do have another site. It's a grabovetsky.com, my last name. But if you want to see a lot more uh, what I do uh, online, uh, there's a, a lot. You just Google my last name, grabovetsky.com, grabovetsky.com, G-R-A-B-O-V-E-T-S-K-I-Y like yellow. And I'm not Grabovetskaya, I'm Grabovetsky, okay? I don't know why it's why important at the end, but I guess it's just, you know, whatever. You know, I didn't change it. Uh, but uh, my point is, my point is, wood carving is pretty much uh, everything for me right now. I sold my business, uh, woodworking business. I gave my business uh, to my employees, uh, moved to Florida, and I still had uh, like a millwork business uh, on a high scale. scale. I worked for really high end uh, clients. I was always busy, always like working uh, late, didn't see family enough. And it was enough, okay? I'm not gonna tell you the story, but one day I sold all of my equipment. I gave up my big shop. It was uh, kind of big shop. I mean, for me, it was big shop. It was 5,000 square feet shop uh, with all the heavy equipment. And uh, I decided to concentrate only on wood carving. And I thought I'm ready to even make less money. I'm okay with that, okay? Uh, so, because I thought you really have to work and you know just do the meal work and whatever the people wants to buy the doors and you know the, the base mold and crown molding and the uh, kitchen cabinets uh, then you're gonna be able to support yourself and i was getting ready to get rid of it but i still busy <laughs> even just wood carving not even day off pretty much no that's true because one day i'm taking off one day a week i always off and I spent that time, you know, uh, my own way, okay? With my family and with my belief. Uh, so, but anyway, so uh, that is the project which you see right now. That is I'm, a project I'm working on. Uh, it is uh, Venetian from Venus uh, 16th century to be exact. It's the end of 15th, uh, beginning of 16th century style wood carving, uh, Venus, Italy. And that is a huge project. What you see is just the one small part of that project, okay? Just the one small section. I can show you a better picture for you to understand what is it. Uh, right here is the one of the sections of that project. And that's 10 feet. Just to that section is just the 10 feet, okay? Uh, and uh, look below, look below that carving. Do you see below like a gray stuff? It's my couch right in my shop yes sometimes i sit down right there and relax <laughs> so once i got rid of my shop i decided uh, you know just uh, i want to be really comfortable even in my shop okay so i've got the windows all around and so on um but uh like i said i really love wood carving and let me show you some more flowers 
okay? Uh, it's uh, from the previous project, but uh, all the details of the flowers um, and so on. And again, that Venetian project from other view to scale of that piece while I was working, look at my hands. Okay, now you probably understand the, how big that is. When I'm saying 10 feet, it's truly 10 feet. Okay, uh, this one is also part, oops, you can't see me, but anyway, now you're able to. That is also part, well, that's actually, no, it's not that. It was, uh, it's wrong. This one is, okay, that one is. Okay, that is uh, one of the corbels uh, which is going on one of the sides. There's the two corbels. But let me tell you something. Uh, uh, what's the difference between my school uh, and uh, uh, lots of schools, although it's not too many schools, approach to teaching what my school, what I do, it's an old European approach. It's like apprenticeship pretty much. You are welcome to my shop. And I'm working on real projects, not just uh, on the toys and small little things, but on a real project. And you can watch over shoulder pretty much, even if it's online, but I have multi-camera setup and you can watch all the details. And if I make mistake, I keep it right there, okay? I keep and I just to show how I fix it. And there's a lot of mistakes I make, of course, you know, <laughs> I still do that. And, uh, uh, that's the beauty of my approach. It's a real life, real deal, okay? So that piece will go to somebody else's house. If you can call that house a house, <laughs> you know? <laughs> We're talking about like 50,000 square feet place or something close to that. That's most of the, you know, places I work in. And uh, like I said, uh, I mean, I can mention some of the names. I've done some Michael Kors library. I've done some Johnson & Johnson, one of the families, uh, uh, you know, a project. I've done uh, some others. Uh, some of the names you even don't know, uh, like a hedge fund owners. Just for you to understand, a hedge fund manager makes millions, uh, millions of dollars a year, but owner, nobody knows. Okay, uh, I've done some work for really, 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 you know, how to say top of the top. It's what how they look at themselves anyway, you know, people, all right? Um, so that is my clients. That is my, I mean, my world pretty much. But I enjoy teaching. I, I enjoy teaching a lot more right now than uh, just, uh, you know, be like a slave of the project with the deadlines. And yes, I do have a line. I have people waiting on me and I'm getting emails all the time. Uh, people would like to do some projects, but I just can't accept uh, projects. I'm saying I'm booked solid. If you're willing to wait, you know, years, <laughs> you know, I'm okay with that. And I'm picky about the projects I'm working on. If I like the project, I'll do it. I don't have all the pictures. Again, just um, Google it, okay? Google my last name and you'll find a lot. Uh, oh, here you go. There's another lion, uh, <laughs> which doesn't look like a lion but that was a replica of 17th century carving, European carving. And uh, there's supposed to be like eight lines and that was a kitchen bar. It doesn't look like a line, but it is. Uh, to show you a scale of that line, how big that is, let me find the picture of my youngest daughter when she was uh, young. Now she's 18 years old, that, that is the youngest daughter, okay? But it was big, okay? It was big. What else can I show to you? Well, I, I, I love, you know, carving furniture. I love that stuff, you know, the furniture carving, like a low relief. Um, uh, for example, online, uh, we do have a project. Uh, it's uh, only furniture related. That is a low relief 18th century carving, late 18th century carving. Uh, I still work on that. And that's also available online if you would like to join. You know what? I found something else. Let me remind you that piece. Okay. Look at that piece carefully. Okay. Now, one lady, one lady decided to make a tattoo. Okay. <laughs> and she made a tattoo. 
And for a long time, for a couple of years or more, I thought it's a arm. But then in one of the you know, classes in person, some said to me, it's not arm, it's a thigh, it's a leg. <laughs> Can you see that now? It's just the side of the, you know, whatever you call that thing. <laughs> and I, uh, it was, uh, <laughs> uh, I wrote back, I actually, uh, you know, wrote back reply, just to honor your body, God given, okay, hashtag and so on, you know, and uh, I mean, you shouldn't do that because it's forever. But uh, I guess, you know, I became a famous, <laughs> but, you know, it is what it is. And um, some of the projects online I do, it's like uh, like wood turning project, really low. It's uh, that is only about I think about uh, eight of an inch, three millimeters deep project. Um, what else can I show to you? Again, just Google it. <laughs> just Google it. You'll find the. Uh, oh, by the way, this is the project online. Uh, it's a single knife technique, uh, also available in my school and. Uh, here you go, the flowers in a, the one that was uh, stained and so on. Uh, let me turn back my camera and I can tell you something else. If you decide to check out my school, it's over 2,500 videos, okay? And that's growing all the time. So nonstop, pretty much every week I add videos. Okay, I release new videos all the time, all the time, all the time. So it's over 2,500 wonderful people, okay? So I know for a fact there's no other schools have as much as my school has, okay? And that's all based on real projects, except a few pieces I teach simple stuff uh, for the complete beginners. So you're welcome. Here you go, there's another piece. Uh, it's a French uh, acanthus or French scroll acanthus. You can call it that way. And uh, I guess uh, I'm ready for the questions. I took about 45 minutes. Perfect, <laughs> yes, thank you. Talking, thank, yes. thank you so much for giving us um, such an interesting uh, background on your history and, and how woodworking has played a different role throughout your, your whole life so far. Um, I am excited to see where, where your career goes after this. Um, so we did have a couple questions come in. Fred okay. asks, for your large flower artistry pieces, what wood do you use? And is it one large blank block to start? Well, it all depends. Let's say uh, if you look at uh, uh, sunflowers, it's completely one block of the wood, okay? Just from solid wood, okay? If you look at this one, uh, the main body, 90% is a solid block except I added some flowers on top. Uh, that is a technique uh, what Grillen Gibbons, really famous wood carver uh, used. Uh, in, if you, when you go to England, just to go to Hampton Court House or any other palaces, you'll find the most famous wood carving projects. And uh, that technique called layering. So it's like a layer base, okay? That project uh, pretty much has a two layers, which is not really, most of it is just a solid piece and just to add a couple uh, layers on top, okay? But flowers itself, yes, they are completely, completely um, from solid piece. And I'm teaching it on that project. If you look, uh, it's a really fam a similar project, but it's not the same, okay? What I showed you previously, this one, it was big. And this project is a smaller. It was another client of mine. And uh, that project called Hashemi Flowers because his last name was Hashemi. He was from royal family, from uh, Iran background and so on. And you know, those people don't like to pay for the full project, okay? And he wanted to me to make the whole thing. And I said, what's the budget? And I told him the price and he tried to bargain back and forth, back and forth. And we ended up like, you know, small one, like maybe, you know, 16, 18 inches. But uh, the whole process, if you're interested to carve a project like that, it's available online. Okay, hope okay. it answers, layered. And uh, Alan wants to know, do you work with wet wood or dried? I like with, uh, to use only dry wood. By the way, I forgot to tell you, it, uh, it is a best wood or lime wood in Europe, okay? Linden in Germany, Lipa in Russia. 
uh, but it's a still best wood. Best and wood. I always best wood. Yes, I always work with the dry wood. I never uh, work with the wet wood uh, because uh, what's going to happen? There's a lot of movement and it's going to, you know, establish some cracks and so on once it's going to dry. Only dry wood and I love uh, natural dryness. Uh, some of my wood, I actually wait about five, 10 years before I touch uh, and I uh, use it on a project. And I buy wood like in semi truck, you know, they bring wood like semi truck and it lasts me for a long time, but only dry wood. Okay. Hope Thank you. Answers. Yes, mm -hmm. I think so. Ken wants to know, is the Venice piece original design or was it based on a specific historical piece? Uh, the Venice uh, piece, okay, this one. Okay, let me show you that picture. Uh, that piece, that, uh, that is the only one section which you see, is not original design. But again, it depends what you mean original design. It is based on a culture. It is based on Venus. It's based on the end of 15th and beginning of 16th century. And it also based on a specific craftsmanship what they had in that town. Uh, if you imagine, people back then did not travel a lot, and they developed their own approach to wood carving, okay? So before I carve that, design itself is mine, okay? 100% is mine. But elements of design, uh, like a style of a canthus leaf, the movements, uh, some specific, uh, like, uh, let's say, like a beads I'm using, our shell style, it is based on original what they've done in Venus in 16, beginning of 16th century, end of 15th century, okay? But as far as the development and so on, it's my own design. And uh, also it is available online, just a step-by-step. Step. Every little detail is there, okay? Just on that project, I have like over 700 videos. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, so they can watch it, yeah. I mean, hey, for 20 bucks a month, you can't beat the price. <laughs> <laughs> so I think you answered this next question already. Ronald wanted to know, are the large pieces made from glued up blanks? So you had said layers. When you, when you were talking about layers, are they attached with glue or is it some other means of attaching them? Well, uh, if you're talking about the flowers, if you're talking about those flowers, okay, it's just the glue because it's just a couple flowers I attached, okay? But back then in 17 and 16th century, uh, they would use dowels, okay? They would use uh, wood dowels and Green Gibbons use some screws, okay? Sometimes when you look at the flower, there's a screw right in the middle, <laughs> right in the middle of the, the I don't use screws, okay? But uh, I use dowels and I use glue, okay? okay. okay because it's uh, more stable. It's just that, but Venus piece, it's completely solid, okay? So that piece, even if you see the deepest spots, it's still completely solid. Wow. So, and it's really thick. And so that's uh, nothing is applied on top. So, so Isaac has a question. He wants to know what is the best way to get kids into wood carving? And I would like to follow that up with knowing, is that something your own children were interested in? Have you, have you let this family tradition carry on? Well, I wouldn't even call it a family tradition. It's in DNA, it's innate, but uh, it's only me who got that from my great, great, great grandfather. But uh, as far as my children, uh, they, uh, they had some interest when they were young. And I have some videos actually, uh, I mean, my own videos, home videos, when my youngest daughter just uh, knocking down with the mallet and just uh, carving something. Um, my father-in-law has some project from my son. Uh, and I have three children, by the way, a son and two daughters. Uh, they, they all have artistic abilities, okay? But I never pushed them in that direction. I always uh, believe if you have a talent or passion in certain area, you really have to concentrate on that, not what your father says. And all of my children different. My son, he's a computer science, you know, guy, programmer, and he's an engineer, but, uh, you know, but anyway, computer. My daughter, uh, she's an architect, and my youngest, she loves chemistry, okay? She's uh, in university in a, you know, I, I still can't figure out what she's going to become, um, but you know, whatever, <laughs> you know, so they don't carve. Okay. But yeah, they all like it. My second daughter, the architect, 
she actually passed i shouldn't say that she passed the school i guess just because i felt sometimes <laughs> You, but so, she actually graduated as the best of the best. That's excellent. Uh, so yeah. do you have any recommendations for how to get kids into wood carving? Like, do you yeah. offer any simple projects on your website or do you have any thoughts to well, matter? In fact, I do have children. I do have children like nine years old, eight years old. But parent has to sign him up because I had a problem. One guy actually stole a, a credit card from mother and uh, he was paying me a year. And then mother emailed me and she said, well, my little boy stole a card, <laughs> you know, and uh, now I have to discontinue because we're not approved that. Okay, but we do have a children. Yeah, we do have a simple stuff, just the one knife and so on. But the way to get that, um, um, uh, if you really want to push the children toward the wood carving, just to place some chisel in a dining table and don't look, let them steal it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and a block of wood somewhere. <laughs> okay, then they're going to become wood carvers. I guess it's the best technique. I think. Well, yeah. I I have uh, six year old twin boys, and I'm sure that that would be what would happen. They'd probably chisel away at the dining table. <laughs> and you have to buy two of them. <laughs> exactly. Um, and hide some block of wood underneath. <laughs> illegal always just attracts. You know, you know, if you do something illegal, they're going to do it. Yes, children will chisel everything. Um, yep. So Ronald wants to know, do you have, do you use a wax finish? I do. Uh, well, first of all, let, let me talk about finishes. Personally, I love to uh, just uh, live without any finish. Okay, just a bare wood. Uh, Glenn Gibbons, he actually never finished the stuff. Uh, it was bare wood. Later on, some people decided to apply lime wash. Then they washed it away and they applied wax. Okay. Uh, it depends on the project. Uh, sometimes I do bare wood. And if the client wants to get like authentic finish, then I would just do wax and uh, and the wax is the best and i'm sorry for my mispronunciation i still don't know the difference between v and w okay and i keep my accent by the way don't laugh okay so i love wax and i like uh, i like english made uh, by uh black bison liberon brand okay so that is the best brand uh it's the best smell and matter of fact i had that, that project uh i did the house for one of the richest people i guess and the, the whole house was Moroccan style. So they would travel to Morocco and they would just uh, get stuff from 17th century and bring in the house. And they had to match everything and just to do everything else in the house. And even the whole kitchen was like a 15th century Moroccan style. And I had to apply the finish on it and it was all wax, okay? And it's, it's a perfectly nice and beautiful looking uh, finish. And I really love it because now once you buff, you buff only high spots and a low, they really dull. And that's actually pops three-dimensional uh, look even more, okay? But some uh, clients, they like shellac. Some of the clients like uh, French polish, you know, really shiny, uh, uh, you know, uh, finish. Some of them just ask me for the regular locker. Hey, I'll spray whatever you pay for. <laughs> or, hey, you know. Whatever your individual preferences. Um, this product is going to be painted with chuck paint. Yeah. So James wants to know if you have any okay. of your grandfather's. James wants to know if you have any of your grandfather's tools. I never met the guy. Well, no, grandfather's I don't. Okay, so the grandfather, but great, great, great grandfather. I don't have any tools, but grandfather. Once I stole a chisel, he never passed me any more tools. Okay? Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, <laughs> like I keep my tools uh, in my shop. Children not allowed right there. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, I so, don't have it. Uh, and especially I couldn't travel. I mean, guess it. I mean, if I would live in, United, uh, in Russia, I would probably have some tools from my grandfather, but I couldn't bring any. I brought my first gouge, what my teacher, master woodcarver gave me. It's number seven and about 19 millimeters. I still have it and I still use it, okay? I brought from Russia, but rest of the tools I couldn't bring. So it's oh. impossible when you escape Russia. <laughs> you know? How would you swim over the ocean with a bunch of tools? <laughs> it's the way we get out, right? I mean, Alaska. It's the, it's the best way, right? Quickest way. This way. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> so right there, Alaska and Russia. <laughs> okay. So Fred wants to know: Do you have any preferred carving tool manufacturers? I do. I do. Uh, my preference, our preferred manufacturer is Ashley Isles. Okay. Uh, it's a British based or England based, or I should say Great Britain. Okay. Just in case if somebody's watching from Great Britain, I shouldn't say English, but uh, it's uh, Ashley Isles, uh, one of my favorite tools. Uh, I mean, one of my favorite manufacturer. Second would be Oreo. Oreo is a French based. And a third would be just pile, okay? And Henry Taylor also falls somewhere right there too. But they're all different, okay? I love uh, construction of it. I like the anatomy of the tool. It's a little different, okay? Uh, and also how it feels, the metal is different. Uh, still, even if they claim it, it's about the same hardness, but you still see the difference once you start carving. But Ashley Isles. And if you're in the United States, the only place you can buy it it would be toolsforworkingwood.com. Toolsforworkingwood.com. That's the only place you can get Ashley Isles tools. But some people hate those tools. Okay. I guess, you know. So best try, best to try to see what works for your individual hand, I guess. Uh, um, well, it depends what you do. If you like to collect the tools, they're not the best looking ones. Mm. Okay. Uh, if you like the best looking ones, you're probably not going to buy them. The best looking ones made in Russia, by the way. Yeah, I'm not, no joke. And the best quality, I, uh, you know, uh, I almost, uh, uh, actually, there's a couple companies talking uh, to me about uh, getting my own line. And uh, one of them in Austria and another one in Russia. And the Russian steel, what they're using, I never... I never saw anything like that. I didn't bring it right here. Maybe next time I'll bring it and just in person show to you what the difference is. You love it, but the price, oh man. You know how much they ask? I, I, I called them back and I said, I'm sorry, I can't do that. You know, I, 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 I mean, it's impossible. People in the United States even can't afford that anymore. It's expensive because all the tools made by hand and hand forged, all the tools and hand polished, just each tool takes, you know, long time, but it's the best quality, okay? We do have another uh, tool question, um, and I don't know, this doesn't seem like it would be very easy to get into online, but if you can maybe just give us an overview. Um, Fred asks, please describe your carving tool sharpening process, resharpening and initial grinding to a shape. Wow, that is a question about uh, an hour long. <laughs> okay, so do you have any videos that cover this? Let's let's maybe check I do, on that. I do. On, online on my school site, I actually show the approach. But in reality, I can tell you in one minute. Okay, uh, so uh, sharpening is one of the main things you have to learn, pretty much. And for me, uh, I had to ask myself: Do I make money on sharpening, or do I make money on carving? And of course, carving. Okay, it's what people pay me for. And uh, if I would just do by hand, okay, uh, I would lose. I wouldn't make anything because it takes like two hours to reshape the tool. So I am using machine uh, for that, okay? And I'm actually showing step by step how I do that. And also in person, in person, when you're gonna take my class, and I like to say that not if, but when, okay? You take my class, I'm gonna show you. My process of reshaping so I established low bevel and sharpening and stropping and buffing all together. It's just like on steroids. It takes only two minutes. You would take two hours by hand. And on machine, what I do, it takes only two minutes. And imagine I have like a half a thousand tools. You know, I can quickly reshape any tool without losing, you know, time, without investing what I don't have to invest. So that is my process. If you want to watch that uh, online, I do have a, a, a tool by tool, pretty much how I sharpen gouge, how I sharpen V tool, how I sharpen back bend, uh, front bend, uh, short bend, and so on. Everything is available right there. That's perfect because the next yep. question had to do with uh, special methods for V gouges sharpening. So it sounds like you have that available on your website. Absolutely, absolutely. Schooloffoodcarving.com. All okay. right. Well, we've got yeah. one more question because it's eight o'clock, so we're going to wrap up. But uh, Ken wants to know, do you do any sanding or scraping after finishing with carving tools? 
Uh, no, I don't. Uh, I don't for a couple reasons. First of all, uh, I do have a video when I tried sandpaper. Okay. And uh, I guess it's okay. Nothing wrong with that. But it takes me twice long, you know, <laughs> all the process of sanding. I can carve clean and leave that surface out of the chisel, it's how we call it, out of the tool and leave some tool marks and that makes that piece unique, okay? I do not scrape, I don't sand, I just leave it like it is. But if you like, you know, sanding, like I said, nothing wrong with that, but it doesn't make the process quicker. It's actually a lot longer. So you have to invest a lot longer, but I do have a video, I tried. If you like sanding, uh, so you really don't use a sandpaper, you're using mesh. Okay, Merca, Merca, it's actually Abranet, it's how it's called. So it doesn't clog because it's a mesh-based abrasive. So it, uh, those abrasive don't get inside of the wood, which is the second reason why I don't like sanding. Once you're gonna sand a surface and you're gonna use the tool again, your tool becomes uh, really dull again, okay? So, but if you like sanding, Abranet by Merca, finished brand, okay? So that is the best sandpaper. All right. Well, thank you so much. This has been very informative and very interesting presentation. And I wanted to let folks know that, again, this is a, a program that the Camden Public Library has done in collaboration with the Maine Coast Workshop, and that is run by William Brown. The Maine Coast Workshop is located in Camden, Maine, and has just begun offering um, really amazing immersive workshops with world-class instructors such as Alexander. And um, you can visit their website and you can find out about upcoming uh, workshops that they have. Also, please visit um, Alexander's website. And he's got, I think you'll pop that up on the screen in just a moment too. So well, that's the main uh, coastal that's workshop. That's the main coastal workshop. And mine is right there. It's a school of uh, woodcarving.com. No, I did that on, on purpose. Let me tell you about the main. It's the first time I'm in a state of Maine and I didn't know if I'm going to like it because it's cold. It is cold, you know? It's like yesterday was 50. I was just frozen, but I love it. I love it because the nature reminds me Russia, okay? All the flowers, all the trees, even birch trees, just like Russia, you know? It gets cold even like in Russia, <laughs> like Siberia. You can build prisons right here. I mean, jails, gulag. I mean, it's a good state for it. A lot of forests, nobody's gonna find you. And we have a lot of wood here too. We've got lots of wood yeah, in our forests. <laughs> Yeah. So, Beautiful state to hide yourself from government. Okay. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, for those of you who have joined us on Zoom, I please encourage you to uh, visit librarycamden.org. We do a ton of Zoom programs on a lot of different topics and they're all free and open to everyone. So please join us again in the future. Once again, thank you, Alexander, uh, for joining us tonight. Thank you, Bill Brown, One for more hosting question. us. One oh, more thing. Yes. Possible? Sure. Hey, please, if you do have an Instagram, follow me, okay? Wood Carver Grabovetsky, follow me. And if you're older person and you have a Facebook, follow me, Wood Carver Grabovetsky. And if you're lady, follow me on Pinterest. <laughs> All right, I think we've- of pictures right there, you know, Wood Carver Grabovetsky. You, YouTube also Grabovetsky, okay? Okay, that's it. All right, I perfect. Talk, got, <laughs> all the social medias are covered there. All right, folks, have a wonderful rest of your evening. And thanks again to everyone for joining us. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>